Hi, everyone. This is Tommy Vincent, your host of In Her Words podcast. And today we have joining us at the table, Nausicaa Del Orto. And Nausicaa is from Milan, Italy. And listen, you may remember we had an episode with her earlier in the year and we had the opportunity to speak via Zoom from I was in Virginia and she was in Italy. But now we are face to face. And so I'm so excited and looking forward to having this conversation with you today. Now, Sika. Same. Thank you for having me. It's a real pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely. And so in that previous conversation, we got to learn all about how you started the Women's Tackle League in Milan, Italy, and the, the league is continuing to grow. It continues to be a safe space for young girls and women, and it's, it's thriving and it's doing its thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so are there any updates there that you would like to share or can we pivot and go and talk about some other things that you have going on? So the updates are that um, we we are also expanding our flag football teams. So we are doing tackle and flag and we have so many kids playing like we have like under six. They did their first championship. Oh, so wow. they're really, really small. <laughs> um, but it's beautiful to see all this women participation. Um, and also women and men playing together, like co-ed, like girls and boys. For example, this summer in Grosseto, um, in Tuscany, in a beautiful <laughs> farm uh, w- w- that is full of fields, of black like, football fields, um, there's going to be the European Championship oh, for wow. um, under 15, and they play co-ed. And this is so important because like girls and boys playing together, it's, it's something that helps boys respect girls more you know because yes. when they're on the field they see how they're fearless and fierce and and the boys are like okay yeah. you got game i respect you and if they learn at a young age that changes everything for them yeah. in their lives so that's the little updates but everything is going great and we're very excited for what's coming girl those wasn't little updates those was big updates <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that, it, you know, everything you're doing, it continues to move forward. You continue to take steps in the right direction. And not only is it, I know that these are part of your dreams, but you're also uh, being a part of the dreams of other young people who have this desire to be great, to compete, to be competitive. And it's an inclusive environment. That's what you're talking about, an environment where it's peer-to-peer respect. It's not about gender. It is about I'm capable and you're capable and let's go do this thing. Let's go win together. I exactly. love it. Exactly. It's amazing. Plus, like, you know, we have a lot of, you know, 15 year olds or like 17 year olds that are trying to like play football, but, but also uh, explore other interests. Yeah. And for example, I try to bring them uh, to all the like big brands events so Jordan and they work with me they we do some little flag football things uh, to make other people interested in our sport and and maybe they see like somebody performing and this amazing stage that Jordan makes and and they're like super blown away and I tell them like girl this can be you yes, you know this can yes. be you please keep dreaming big because that's what I did and I ended up here and like my dad used to say like you will never get anywhere and stuff look where I am yes right where you want to be exactly that that is that is a message within itself because oftentimes Unfortunately, we can be in environments where people are unable to see our dreams. Yeah. And when people can't see the dream that you have, it makes it difficult for them to believe our dreams. And so they don't necessarily know how to cultivate and encourage us to be able to accomplish those dreams. Yeah. Or to just be ourselves. Absolutely. Because, you know, some parents would do anything for you except for letting you be yourself sometimes. Yeah. And it's hard because it's hard to be a parent and it's hard to be a kid. And I think that at some point you just have to find your own space where to make those, those dreams come true because yeah. sometimes you just won't have that support. But you have to create it with the people around you that really believe in you and, and your dreams. So this is what I'm trying to like share with the younger girls uh, in my team or the teams that I coach because yeah. You know, these girls need to know how to dream big and visualize things and work for those things. And just a person like me saying, 
it is possible. You can do it. Like you can work for it and it's coming. I'm telling you, I'm the evidence of it. Just follow me. Um, it's just amazing to be able to be a mentor. Like it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, you know, in your own experience that, uh, like dreams attract like dreams. So you, you will find your people, but you have to keep dreaming because it's your dream that's going to, you know, be the magnet towards the dreamer that is dreaming just like you. Yeah, and it's a talent hub, but you know, like you, you start with one person and then you meet another one and you you find your passion, you find your people. So yes. you're surrounded by all these amazing human beings that can help you with your dream, dream and you can help them with their dreams. So it's just a, a nice network. Even when I come to the Super Bowl, I feel like I have a little family here yeah. of women that really work in football and they they work so hard to to really be able to work in football and it's just incredible to see. So let's I want to talk about um in addition to the work that you're doing with flag football and tackle football, I want to talk about the other work that you're doing. And what it brought to mind to me when I was just really just kind of thinking about your life, your journey and the things that you've had the opportunity to, you know, participate in is there's that um, there was a moment in time where a, a news uh, person had said to LeBron James, just shut up and dribble. And it's like athletes have one lane to operate in and don't do nothing else. You're not qualified for anything else. And we all know that being a professional football player, that that's something you do that's not who you are. And it's who you are is where all of these gifts and talents are able to come into play and it allows you to operate in many different spaces. We're not limited to one thing. So let's talk about what else you're doing. So um, in my life, um, I'm also a producer. So I'm not only an athlete, but I'm a producer of uh, sports documentaries, especially documentaries about the NFL. So one of my goals, um, I was always been to really promote the game of football all over the world because this game saved my life. And I'm a better person. I'm a better athlete. Um, and I think that it can really change people even if you don't play it, you know? And some people won't ever get a chance to play, but what if you give them the sensation, the emotions of the field? Like, what if you give that to, to them, the way they can feel um, a game or a story of a game? So this is why I like to tell stories and I like to produce documentaries because I want people in Italy, in Europe, all over the world to be able to explore these stories, all these amazing stories in the field because what I what I what I see in the NFL when I when I see in football in general is that life gets harder and harder for everybody. We just saw Dak Prescott winning Man of the Year after what happened to his mom and what happened to his, his brother, and it's like he gives us hope because we know that life can get harder and harder. But if you find the right team and you have faith in God and you have the love up for the game. There's nothing that, that's going to stop you. And there's nothing that you can't overcome. So these stories are important to people. But sometimes it's, you know, it's hard to deliver them because some Italians don't speak English and stuff like that. But we try to do our best. Like I work for Dazon, so we're trying to do our best to really deliver the stories to the people and make them feel like they, they, they were in the field too, you know, like the other players. Um, so we're trying to to give them chills a little bit. And, yeah. I, and I, it has always been like my, my dream to do this, to give chills to people with like my, <laughs> my documentaries. Um, you know, it, it's funny because I learned how to like tell stories in two different ways. The first one was to promote my league because I started the league and I needed people to like come play and come to practice. So I started doing highlight reels. But then the second way I learned is that we have a tradition in my family where after graduation, like from from university, you go to Uncle Richard in Connecticut. He has a company of parts and little metals, like little engine parts, uh, which is super boring, right? And um, <laughs> and my my dad, my dad had a, a carburetor company, so he's like, if you want to work in the family business, you have to go to Richard first and work there. 
every day. You know, you have to sell parts. You have to be like on the lines, like right mm. there. And so I go to Connecticut and I go to Bristol, Connecticut. So there's nothing, <laughs> there's nothing good. Like the best thing is seeing Bristol on the review mirror, you know? And so I go to this place and at some point my, my um, boss says, okay, we have to sell this part to Chrysler. And I'm like, okay, let's make a video about it. <laughs> and he was like, no, like I need Excel sheets. Like just What go. are you talking about? <laughs> but I, I said, okay, I'm gonna do Excel sheets. And then I did the, the little video to explain how the part was made by who. And they, they even like got more parts because mm. of that. And so I was like, Dad, I don't want to work in, the com in your company. I want to tell stories in my life because if I can tell stories about a Chrysler part, I can tell stories to the entire world. So that's how I figured it out. Um, at the end of, of the day, all of my brothers, nobody works in the in the family company because we <laughs> we were like, we're just going to go with our talents and leave yes. the people that love that and yeah. motorsports and stuff with, with, with that company. But um, so that was my goal. Like at first I was like, I love this. I love to be able to edit something that gives you goosebumps. Yeah. It's like crazy. And so um, I think it's a really good way to grow the sport internationally. I think that even at the honors, I was there, I had the chance to be there and I cried the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I think it's so impactful. So um, that this is why I'm, I'm trying to do like another job other than my, uh, you know, professional like football team job because you always need to explore new territories. You always need to explore other passions. Um, and it's really important to have also a backup because, you know, the athlete's career is not forever. Absolutely. Also, like you said about LeBron, we have so much to say. Yes. Even more than like people that have never played sports. So we want to have a voice. We want to raise it and we want to be heard. Yeah. And, you know, every, um, every, athlete, whether it's at the collegiate level, at every level, quite frankly, there's a point where that career comes to an end for various reasons. You, you may peak out and that's as far as you're going to go. You can have an injury. There are a lot of reasons why that can happen. You may just say, I'm done. You still have a lot of life ahead of you. And you have the opportunity to continue to make an impact in the world. And so if you're not exploring other things and developing, you know, other skill sets, then you're missing out on maximizing your potential and who you can be. And so it's really important for us to just always keep in mind that we can do as much or as little as we want to do in this life. Yes. It's, told, it's a choice that every person has the opportunity to make. Yeah, and like um, before, like Odessa Jenkins, she said um, that we don't want like women to be put in a box. Yes. And that's what I hate. Like I have many talents and yeah. I'm really <laughs> proud of them. I can also sing like I haven't, you know. I, oh, no, I know you, know, you can sing. I, I recorded I recorded an, like a song <laughs> once. <laughs> it's on Spotify, but I, I'm not proud of it. But in general, like I have talents and I like to explore them. And I think it's, it's really helpful for what I'm trying to do like in sports and to grow to sports internationally, it's, 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 it's something that is necessary. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know what I love about the, so the documentaries that you're aspiring to do and, you know, addition to the ones you've already done, what it does, it also allows for the individuals that you're featuring to be humanized. And why I think that's so important is because oftentimes, especially young people, when they see entertainers, because that's what athletes are, they're entertainers, when they see them, it's like, oh, wow, look what they're able to do. Because they, they're not able to recognize their people just like you. They were little at one point in time, just like you. They've experienced life just like you, good times, bad times, and they've been able to utilize all aspects of their lives to get where they are. So when you're able to tell the story of the individual that's being propped up on the pedestal, it humanizes them and it allows for other people to see them 
as just like me. It, it makes them relatable. Yeah. So yes. I think that's extremely powerful. Yes, especially to the people that are not football fans. Like when a mom sees uh, what, what happened to Dak Prescott, for example. Absolutely. She can really relate to that person, even if she never played one snap and maybe she, she might not understand two or three rules or maybe she knows everything about football. I don't know. But in general, it's really important because you relate to common things. That's what I like to do. Like when I tell the stories about the players, once I told the story about this guy whose name is Giorgio Tavecchio. He's from Italy and he was the only kicker in the NFL that was Italian. And But he got like, you know, cut so many times to get a spot. So I was like, you know what? To tell your story, we're going to make a lasagna because a lasagna is made of many, many layers. And, you know, it takes a long time and a lot of layers to make something really special, like your career. And he loved it. So he did it with Teresa Thompson and yeah. everything. And and it was amazing to be able to, you know, uh, get the food and the players and the, you know, warm of being in a home and and cooking um, something that you have always loved to cook. Yeah. It's just amazing because you really relate to real people and it's important. Otherwise, people don't understand. They don't relate. They don't empathize. Yeah. So it's important to put like different things other than football with football uh, to be able to engage culture through football. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's a medium. Yeah. It's it's definitely a medium. So for you, what is, um, what's next? Wow, what's next? Um, well, you know, my company has made a really important partnership with the NFL. So um, to grow the game internationally. So I'm, I'm really excited to work more closely with the NFL to be able to um, bring a lot of great content everywhere and to cover many events. Because for example, you know, all these tournaments, under 15 tournaments, uh, world championship tournaments of flag football, nobody covers that. I want to cover that yeah. because there's so many great stories about it. And we can, we can tell so many stories of the world, you know, mm, the citizen of the world. So it's, it's really, important to me and I'm and I'm very excited for that I'm very excited for the European Championship in Ireland this summer for like senior senior championship um, it's going to be incre an incredible year really like so many plans ahead this week I was here to um, shoot a documentary about football in Arizona so we went in Red Mesa in the desert to uh, interview a coach in a Navajo reservation that he coaches on um, a Navajo uh, football team yes so it's really Really amazing to see that and then we went to you know Flagstaff and we interviewed a lot of really important women in the game um, so we're very excited for you know what's coming and everything every documentary we will produce mm -hmm. I love it I love it so now this segment of our conversation is um, and you now everyone always ask can I bring can I use two women or what well, you've already brought your grandmother yeah so now you have the opportunity to, um, you know, in this segment of I'm bringing her to the table with me, you have an opportunity to bring another woman to the table to give her her virtual flowers. So um, <laughs> to give my virtual flowers, I would choose Samantha Rappaport. Uh, she's the senior VP of uh, football development at the NFL. OK, so I'm going to tell you the story is really funny. 2016. Uh, there is the women's tackle football games in Orlando. My parents don't want me to go and I didn't have the money to go there. So I sell my baptism like necklaces that were <laughs> horrible, by the way, like big kids in, in gold like this. So I was like, OK, it's fine if I sell them. And I just buy my ticket and I go there and I eat my lunchbox for lunch and dinner. And I go there and there's the first women in careers in football forum, the NFL. And I'm there with 220 women from 50 different countries listening to Samantha Rappaport saying, you can work in football. You can work in football. You can work in football. I was like, me? <laughs> and I was like, okay, let's, let's, you know, let's give it a, a try. And she, she asked us to write why we wanted to work in football, our why. And I said that it made me a better person, a better athlete, and I wanted to change the world through football. And then, like, months later, I apply for NFL Films. I don't tell her anything. And then I get to my last interview, and the lady says, oh, that's funny, you were in the newsletter of the NFL, like, 
yesterday because they published all your whys of that day. So, and we, and we saw your name. We were like, we're go- I mean, we we're going to interview her. And I was like, I'm getting this job. This is my place. I belong to football. I belong to this place. And if it wasn't for Sam, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to visualize that because I was, I was like undermining myself because yes. I, they taught me to do that. Yeah. And, and then she opened my eyes. She was like, open your eyes. You can, you can work in football. You're from Italy. It doesn't matter. You can, you can get here. So it was incredible. And I, I mean, she's still super supportive, supportive to me. She always uh, steps up when, when she needs to step up and, and she's a, an amazing mentor to me. So I really thank her every time that I can because uh, she changed my life with her words. Yes, words are powerful. When they take root, especially positive word, all words have power. But when you get the right words, somebody speaking the right words over your life, it will change the trajectory of your life. Definitely, definitely. It did. It did for me. Yeah, so, absolutely. Amazing. So is there anything uh, that you would like to share with our listening community that uh, we did not talk about? I mean, um, my message for like everybody out there is is always going to be, um, okay, you're going to have to fight for everything you love and everybody you love. You just have to be a fighter in life, right? But my message is like to keep fighting for your dreams, even if everybody's telling you that they can come true because I am the evidence that you can turn your life around and if you believe in yourself and in your dreams, then you find the right supportive team to help you. So this is definitely something I, I want people to remember because somebody is out there and they're probably discouraged and I want to give them hope. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that, Nalsika. Uh And where can people find you? Okay, so you can follow me at Nausica with two A's at the end, the Lorto. Um, also, if you type call me now, you probably will find me on Instagram. Um, Is that your song that's on Spotify? No. <laughs> no, but you know what's the name of my song? What? Love is for the brave. Oh. It's like a weird song. We're going to look it up. <laughs> you know you know, you know, know how I did it? So basically, my trainer, like physiotherapist of my team, has like a band. And he was like, oh my God, you can sing. Come like sing a song. And I, and I wrote the song. And I'm like, wow. why did I do that? I don't know. But it was a fun experience, you know, to be able to record a song. But, and I don't know, you put it on Spotify. It has like two two listeners, so, but that's fine. <laughs> that's a good experience. Best of both worlds. Well, as always, it is such a joy and a pleasure to be in conversation with you. Um, I'm so grateful that I've had an opportunity to gain a new sister. Me too. Um, and I'm grateful that you took time out of your schedule to come and stay a while with me and um, at the In Her Words table. And you know, you are welcome at my table anytime. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Come on and stay.